is Dr. Jesse Sanders, owner and chief veterinarian of Aquatic Veterinary Services. Today I will be demonstrating how to use the Hawk FF1A fish farming nine parameter test kit plus nitrate in 10 minutes. So this is the test kit that is used most commonly by fish veterinarians and aquaculture professionals, but it is certainly available to the public. So when I first got this test kit, it took me 45 minutes to run just one test. Well, at least get through all the tests at least once. And that's really hard to do when you're on a schedule with clients. You know, you've got about an hour to get everything done. So I've figured out a way to use only the equipment in these two boxes in order to do all the tests in only 10 minutes. So we're going to start with our timer. So we got 10 minutes on the clock. And we are going to go ahead and get started. So I'll carry a little plastic bag to keep all my empties in. Uh, if you do have a thermometer, you can go ahead and toss it in your pond or in your tank. You only need about a cup of water to run all these samples. And first we're going to start with rinsing our tubes out. Waste container here. And then we're going to start with our nitrite. So this is the only test that takes the longest. This one actually takes 10 minutes to run. So we're going to get our little foil pack. And cap this. Give it a good shake. And let that sit. So now we're going to start with pH. So the pH is tested instantaneously. So again, rinse your vial. Fill it up to so that five milliliter mark. Then we have our wide range pH indicator. We're gonna do six drops. One, two, three, four, five, six. Put that back in there. Now with these, I got the right little color wheel already. Now, you don't have to have the comparison tube in here if your water is really clear but thankfully if it's a funny color from say algae or tannins in the water you got extra in here so you can just fill this up and put it in the wheel now when I look at the colors I take the white booklet that this comes with because it provides a really clear background you can hold it up and then you get your little color wheel to determine about what it is now this goes at increments of 0.5, so if it's kind of in between two colors, we'll just call it instead of 7.5 to 8, we'll call it about 7.8. So that one's all done. Go ahead and toss your water and rinse it out. Now we're going to go ahead and get your KH ready to go. So rinse out the little tube. Go ahead and fill it. We're actually not going to run it just yet. So we're actually going to fill this up again. Again, we already rinsed it. And then we're going to start our ammonia test. So get our nestlers. Four, two, three. Shake that around. And this needs about a minute to set. So while this is setting, we're going to go ahead and test our cage. So we'll start with our felon. Swirl, no pink, and our little pretzel. And mix that around. Grab our sulfuric acid solution and start dropping one, two. So that's a DKH of 10, also 170 uh, milligrams per liter. As you can see, the color really hasn't changed. So I usually stop testing at 10 drops because the cutoff's 100, so we're up above 170. We don't really need to test anymore. Having more alkalinity really isn't going to make a big deal from there on out, so I stop testing. 
Now, from here, you can go straight to the nitrate, or you can run an oxygen test. So this is a little hard to run when you have a standing sample. So usually I'll take our little jar and run to an area of the pond that has least amount of water flow, has a lot of algae, or just kind of looks like a stagnant puddle. Dump it in and fill it up. But for the sake of this test, go ahead and fill it. And then we get our oxygen. One. I just realized I forgot to run my ammonia. So that's okay. It'll be okay sitting there for a minute. So we'll swap out our pH disc for our ammonia disc. So again, this needs a minute, but if you run it a couple seconds later, it's okay. Pull up to our white. And we're good. That is exactly at zero. So go ahead and toss that. So, back to our oxygen. Since it's all sealed up, we don't really have to worry that I did that a little out of order. I actually usually don't run oxygen unless the pond has a lot of algae, the fish are acting really weird, um, or it's a really, really hot day. So, most of the other time, our oxygen levels for most tanks and ponds are usually doing okay. So, I mix that up real good. And then this has to settle for a little bit. So we'll go ahead and start with the nitrate. So again, new vial. Go ahead and shake that out. And fill it up. Oop, too much. Pour it back in. Now we have our nitrate. And there. Again, usually you can use the little caps, but my thumbs are really big, so it makes it a little easier. You can see the oxygen starting to settle out a little bit, so we can shake that. I'm going to shake this for about a minute. Or hanging out, usually chatting with the owner. Um, again, if I'm not going to go run an oxygen test and go straight to the nitrate, after this test, I have a little bit of time usually, so I'll go ahead and get my buckets prepared, make sure the anesthesia is ready to go. Um, but yeah, like I said, I don't always run the oxygen test, but for the sake of this, we can always do that. Um, you also have our little electric salt meter that you can run anytime you have a chance. It's instantaneous. Don't forget your thermometer is in the tank or the pond, getting a temperature, so be sure to pull that out. Go ahead and shake this up one more time. All right, and then this is going to need another minute, as long as you read it within five minutes, but we'll be reading it way before then. So, now that our oxygen has been shaken a couple times, we add our third little packet with our super fancy toenail clippers. Now we have all of our rinse tubes. We're going to fill this guy up. Pop him in here. Seal that up. You rinse this guy. Now we grab our sodium bio. And we start dripping again. So one, two, three. This can go a little bit faster, especially depending on how bright orange this is. Usually the brighter the yellow color, the more you can put in there. Two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So the bare minimum for most fish is going to be about 12. And we're at 20. So looking pretty good so far. One, two. Yep, not quite. Three. 
There we go. So that's at 23 milligrams per liter. So nice and high. So that anymore. Let's you out. Um, this does come with a hardness and a um, chloride test. I really don't use them very often. All the water in California, unless you're using bottled water, is insanely hard. So we really don't need to run it unless you're using, say, RO water. These guys are all good. So now we can go ahead and read our nitrate test. just about at, so again this goes in increments of two and then you multiply it by 4.4. So we're at three here which is just about 13 milligrams per liter. So well within range for most pet fish species. Usually you're gonna try to keep it under 20. So rinse that out. And checking our timer, we are done with 10 minutes. There. So now we can check our nitrite, and that is a nice, pretty clear color. If there was any nitrite, this would be pink. So since there's no pink, I usually don't bother getting out the wheel to test it. It's just, you know, it, it's clear. It's not pink. And that is everything. So again, don't forget to grab your thermometer if it is in the tank or pond. But you can go ahead. This is just extra vial and get everything packed up. So that is how you run all of your fish water quality parameters. Again, we got ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, KH, oxygen, and temperature, and even salinity if you want it, in 10 minutes. So certainly this kit is a big investment for a lot of fish keepers. You're looking about four to $500 at the time that this video is being made. So there is the API Freshwater Master Test Kit. It's available at most major pet stores and only going to run you about 20, 30 bucks. Um, not as sensitive. It does not include the KH. You can buy that separately, but we'll be including links for both if you're interested. So thank you very much for watching. And if you have any questions about fish health, please check out some of the other videos on our channel and our website at cafishvet.com. Thanks and have a great day. For help with your fish, please visit the American Association of Fish Veterinarians at fishvets.org or the World Aquatic Veterinary Medical Association at wavma.org.